it's, you know, strictly professional. There's levels of undress. There's levels of comfort. And I've always just felt more comfortable with another woman. I'm not a touchy person in the first place. But then I remembered. <laughs> It's Loie, and I'm back to tell you another story. This is about a self-care day that was very unusual. It was just one of those days where I genuinely felt like I was in a sitcom or something. I'm going to be doing something a little bit different with this video. I've been trying to find out ways to make things more fun and engaging. By the way, if you have any ideas, please leave them in the comments. Some of my viewers wanted more art-related content, especially after the logo video I made. I'm going to be real. I love visual art and design. I have a degree in it and a full-time job in it. I drew my own model, like the thing you're seeing here, and also making things like video essays and tutorials are amazing, but they take a lot of work. I want to find a way to incorporate this that is fun for me and doesn't take up a lot of time. So what we're trying today is some unhinged doodling. These are going to be ugly and I will not apologize for them. Click off now if you cannot stand ugly and sometimes terrifying doodles. Let's go. This was at the end of last year, around Christmas. At my work, we have vacation days, and if you don't use them by the end of the year, they will expire. I'd already taken off the time between Christmas and New Year's, but I still had an extra day. So I figured, why don't I take a self-care day? There's a place with this Christmas meat pie that I'd wanted to pick up, and it's on the other side of town, so I figure, oh, maybe I... Ah, I'm hitting my microphone. <laughs> so my idea was to go across town and this pie place is get a massage, get a facial, get dinner at the pie place. This pie, it's like a pre-order and it's frozen, but they also have a lot of nice food and then go home. So I go into Reddit and I'm Googling. I'm not Googling on Reddit. What am I talking about? <laughs> I go to Reddit and I am searching where to find a good massage in this area. You see, I've had a lot of massages in my life because I was in a car accident when I was a teenager and my muscles got really, really tight around my neck and my back. Luckily, there's some procedures I can get now that can help, but every so often when my muscles are feeling tight, I just want to get a massage. My very favorite place is a Chinese place that used to be near me where there would just be like these kind of old ladies who would go up on the table and it felt like they were just tearing your muscles apart. I do not know if this is healthy, but I liked it. Anyway, I find a place that everyone says they love and says gives a really deep, good, satisfying massage. It is a lot more expensive than the ladies near me, but you know what? It's a special day and I'm gonna give it a chance. So I call in and I say, hey, I was in a car accident a long time ago, but I get these tight muscles because of it. And the woman on the phone is super nice. And she's like, oh, well, we have a few people who are good at that. Laura, she's great with injuries and rehabilitation. We also have Lily, she's really strong. She gives really good pressure. And I'm like, oh, okay, great. And then she tells me, oh, they're available in like a month and a half. I was like, oh, I was hoping for something maybe two Fridays from now. And then so she's like, okay, let me check. Let me check who's available. Oh, I'm so sorry. On that day, we only have one masseuse that's still available. He's Ethan and he's good too. He's good too. <laughs> you see, I never had a professional massage by a man before. It's, you know, strictly professional. There's levels of undress. There's levels of comfort. And I've always just felt more comfortable with another woman. I'm not a touchy person in the first place. But then I remembered. I have this friend. Let's call her Rose. She's being a real adult. She literally bought a whole house, moved like an hour away, is living her best life. She told me that her husband gave her a gift receipt for a massage place. And she told me that there was this guy there. His name was Jonathan and he was built. He was like huge, tall, muscular, super strong. She was like, I feel like my muscles are being torn fiber by fiber. I was like, that sounds amazing and she's like okay not only that but he's super nice like we talk about life he gives me advice he even gave me a place for my husband to go get counseling for his adhd and i'm like oh my gosh i need a jonathan but she lives really far away now so it's hard to get there so i'm wondering like hmm maybe it's time maybe ethan doesn't have the touch that these other women do but maybe he has something special Maybe he can give me my first man massage. So I say, yeah, that's fine. Let's go with Ethan. So the day comes, the sun is shining. I go and I grab a sashimi bowl for lunch. My plan is like massage, facial, dinner, pie. Get to the massage place. 
I go in, it's very peaceful, lots of plants everywhere, very relaxing environment. I sign some forms, they give me hot tea, and the woman at the desk tells me to just wait on the couch and Ethan will be in in a minute. I'm waiting there and I am excited to get my muscles torn apart. So then Ethan walks in and he doesn't quite look like I imagined him to. He's not some big burly guy like Jonathan. He's this kind of linky hippie guy with long hair. But you know what? That's fine. On the outside is not what counts. I believe in him. And he's like, hey, follow me. We're going to go into the massage room. He has a very gentle voice. I'm like, okay, cool. He takes me into the massage room. And I know that massage rooms are dark, but this one is like dark, dark. Like <laughs> there is one of those little salt lamps, but it is so dim and it's like down on the floor near a corner. He tells me, okay, get undressed, go under the blanket and I'll be back. But the second he closes the door, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm basically in complete darkness. I didn't even know how to get undressed without tripping over something. I try to walk over to the chair, which is where I put my purse with my phone in it. And I end up like tripping and falling into the chair. Luckily, I was good. I get my phone out and I turn like the flashlight on while I start to undress. And then I realize he didn't specify how I should undress. This might sound weird, but every massage place kind of does it differently. Some tell you take absolutely everything off. Some tell you keep your bra and underwear on. Some tell you just take your top off. And I don't know what the vibe is here. This is a man massage. I am not going to be nasty. I'm going to take my clothes off, but keep my bra and underwear on. Take it all off, lay under the blanket like he tells me. And when he comes in, the light is blinding. And I go, oh, I wasn't sure if I should take my bra off or not. And he, he goes, oh yeah, no, you should definitely take your bra off. We're going to be doing a lot of muscle work. And he goes to close the door and I'm like, wait, 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 stop. It is too dark. I, I can't see. Can you, can you turn on another light? And luckily he does. There was just a whole lamp he had never turned on. Laying under the blanket. He takes a while, but he does come back in and he starts a massage. It is pretty standard. Nothing crazy, but you know what? I wasn't promised anything crazy. Any expectations about this massage are entirely in my head. Sometimes during a massage, hair will get in your face when you're laying face down. Or, you know, you have like a weird itch. And usually I'd be like, hi, sorry, I'm going to just scratch this. And usually the masseuse is like, hi, no worries. But um, when I was laying face down and like my bangs got into my eye, I was like, oh, haha, sorry, just a second. I need to move my hair out of my eye. And he was dead silent. This is probably just his personality, but in my head, I'm like, is he judging me? And later, my nose was a little itchy, and I'm like, oh, hi, so sorry. Can I just reach up and itch my nose? And he's just dead silent. You know, it's feeling a little awkward. You know what? It's fine. It's, it's, it's a fine massage. Mediocre pressure. Usually, masseuses will, like, ask, is this enough pressure? Is this too much? Is this too little? And I should have spoken up, but I don't know. <laughs> I just felt embarrassed. So there's this clock in the corner and when I'm face up, I'm just kind of looking at it because I know I have to be to my facial suit. At this point, he's massaging my arm. He goes, what's your sign? And I'm like, oh, he spoke. And I wasn't really <laughs> listening. I'm like, oh, oh, what do you say? He goes, oh, what's your star sign? And I tell him, you know, I think it's Sagittarius. Am I saying that right? Um, but I don't really pay much attention to it because every time I've read it, I did not really relate. He goes, oh, no, that is you. I can feel the fire inside. I'm thinking, you can feel the what inside? He keeps massaging and then he goes, well, where are you from? And this is a question I get a lot because people don't really know what my race is, but he also is kind of racially ambiguous. So instead of being annoying about it, I figure maybe he means something else. I'm like, oh, you mean where I live or like my family or where I grew up? And then he's like, yeah, what's your hometown? And I go, oh, well, I grew up in a lot of different places, but I feel like maybe the main one is Denver. And he really perks up. The thing is, he's kind of a hippie, and Denver is known for uh, certain hippie things. The only thing I can't mention in this video, probably, but also, you know, hiking, spiritual retreats. But he says something I could not expect. He goes, oh my gosh, there's such beautiful cathedrals there. I'm thinking, like, cathedrals? And I'm like, oh, do you mean, it means something else? Because like, there's the, the mega churches there. Like if you know about the George Bush mega church, like that kind of thing exists. So I'm like, oh, do you mean like the mega churches? Like the churches with the big stages and stuff? And he goes, yeah, the mega churches, the architecture and the stained glass, beautiful. No offense to the mega churches, but they just look like your average building. They're, they're not that beautiful. And I'm just trying to think, where are these cathedrals 
there, there's probably one fancy one somewhere downtown, but I feel like everything in this state was built in like the last hundred years. There's not really any beautiful historical marvels of architecture, but then I see the clock and it's really past the one hour massage that I booked. I'm like, oh, how much longer is the massage? And he goes, oh, well, I don't really have anybody after this. So I thought I'd give you some extra time. So however long you want. And I'm like, oh, thank you so much. But I actually have to be somewhere, run over to my next appointment, which is a facial. I've only had one facial before, and this was a place that was like high tech. And they had this Japanese machine that would do a scan of your face and look and see where there were maybe oil plugs and things. They also had this big magnifying thing that you could look through and you would see like every pore that had oil in it. Honestly, it was kind of traumatizing. And then they're like, so what facial do you want? And I go, the one that will clear all of this out, please. <laughs> so I got the facial. It's overall pretty nice, fine. There's a part where she squeezes something on my nose so tightly that I have like a red mark on my nose for literally the next three weeks, but that's another story. At the end, she starts to lecture me about how I need to come in for facials more often. And this is where I get a little bit sketched out because I'm like, I've literally ever gone to like two of these in my life. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then she goes, and also you need to do something about those. She points to her face and she points to her eyes. And I'm like, about my eyes? And she goes, yeah, all the wrinkles under your eyes. And I am not at the age where I am wrinkling yet. So I'm like, what do you mean? And she holds up a mirror and I have like a fold under my eye. I actually looked it up. It has a name. I'll put it on the screen. But a lot of people are just born with it. Like even pictures of me as a baby have it. And I go, oh, no, I've actually had that since I was born. And she's like, oh, oh my gosh. Like, and she's like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> So then it's time for me to go get my dinner. I didn't know if I should make a reservation because it would be super early, but when I get in here, it is like popping. And I tell them, hey, I placed this pre-order for the pie. Can I eat dinner first and then pick up the pie later? And they sit me in a table for one, which is next to a table that has two guys at it who are maybe 50, 60-ish years old. One of them is wearing like a fedora and a leather jacket. The other has his hair in a ponytail. They immediately give me not the best vibes. I normally am just in my own world and I don't really overhear what people are saying, but they were very, very loud. They had also just gotten sat down. They were already going through the menu and being like, I don't know if them having this food on the menu is a good choice for them. I wonder if they serve more of this, if they would be more profitable. And I'm wondering like, who are you guys to even say this? You haven't even eaten the food yet. They're also talking about like all the chicks at their office and oh, it just doesn't feel great to me. So I place my order, I get my appetizer, which is fried quail. I'm gonna post a picture here. I was taking that picture and they were looking over and I kind of understand this is a very <laughs> unique looking dish. Kind of gives me eraser head vibes. And I wasn't offended that they were like looking over being like, what's going on? And they're like, is that fried chicken? Why is it so small? I'm like, oh, actually it's fried quail. And because they saw me taking a picture, they're like, oh, are you a food influencer? Are you an Instagrammer? And I'm like, no, I just thought this looked interesting. So I was taking a picture, but then I try to just, you know, go back to my own thing. I'm not really wanting to make conversation with them. And I try to give off that signal well, but I guess I don't. So again, they're talking and talking, criticizing where this restaurant is located, which... So I live in New York, and the, the, the main city is Manhattan, and we were literally right across the bridge. So this is not very far away from Manhattan, and they're just like, wow, it's all the way out here. How does anybody make it out to this restaurant? Does anyone even live here? And the guy's like, well, where do you live? I bet it's not anywhere near here. And I tell them the neighborhood I live in, which is a very big neighborhood, but it's also not that far from here. And then he goes, oh, so you're on 19th by the park? And I look at him like, what? Because it's a huge neighborhood. Why would he assume that I live at this very specific address? And he goes, well, that's where all my friends live. And I'm like, oh, no, no, I I'm not there. And then they start trying to like pry into exactly where I live. And that's when I'm like, oh, I'd really rather not talk about that. And they're like, well, it must have taken you so long to get out here. Why did you come all the way out here? Again, it's literally not that far. I do not know why they're so bothered by where this restaurant is, but I go, oh, they have this famous holiday pie. So I came to pick up my pre-order. I figured I'd get dinner while I'm here. And then they just start like heckling the waitress and they call her over and they're like, ma'am, ma'am, why does she get a pie? We don't get a pie. And the waitress is like, it's for pre-order. You can place an order and we can have it ready tomorrow. 
And they go, hey, so like, what kind of pies do you have? And she goes, oh, well, there's only one type of pie. It's a meat pie. And they're like, meat pie? Ew. And she just walks away. (laughs) They turn to me and they go, you're eating a meat pie? Like, Sweeney Todd? And I go, yeah. And then I like look back at my phone because I'm really trying to be like, I don't really want to engage with you guys. And they won't stop saying it. Like they're looking at me going, meat pie. You know, in Sweeney Todd, they make pies into people. <laughs> I mean, they make people into pies. I know what Sweeney Todd is. But I'm just like, like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And they literally just keep on with it, trying to explain Sweeney Todd to me. And I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Finally, they get their first food and they're splitting. I think it's just like a burger. And the waitress comes over. She's like, oh, so how's your food? And they just look at her like in silence. And she goes, well, I don't know if that's good or bad, but. And then they go, well, if you really want our opinion, do you know what umami is? It's a flavor. It's uh, heavily recognized in Japanese cuisine. See, in this burger, I want the umami flavor to be coming from the patty, but instead it's coming from the toppings. And she's like, oh, okay, thank you. I'll let the chef know. I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> and then I get my main dish and they start going, hey, what is that? What is that? And I'm just trying to ignore them, stay on my phone so they forget, but they just keep getting louder and louder, being like, what is that? And the second I turn around to tell them, he goes, you got the steak, didn't you? Ah, what do you mean? Why are you asking me if you think you know what I got? But it wasn't even the steak. Like, I got the dunk. I try to finish eating as quick as I can, get my pie, and then on the way back, I realize there's like a cheese store, and they have a cherry preserve there that I want to put with the meat pie. I go into the cheese store, and oh my gosh, I love cheese. There's such great cheese everywhere. And I start shopping around and I end up just buying different types of cheese. And then I leave, starting to walk to the bus stop to go home. I realize I didn't even buy my cherry preserves, but I'm like, I'm not going to be out on this side of town. So in shame, I go back in with all the items I just bought and pick up the cherry preserves too. And they're like, oh, back so soon. I'm like, yeah. It was my day that felt like a sitcom. Have you ever encountered people in real life that didn't seem real? Let me know in the comments. And please hit the notify and subscribe button if you haven't yet. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.